if we are recording. Uh, very warm welcome to all. Uh, this is, in fact, our second uh, webinar for the DS for OER course, uh, uh, web the webinars we're running to support folk who are engaged mm -hmm. with the um, digital skills for collaborative OER development course. Yes. And uh, welcome. Uh, so the, the purpose of this uh, discussion is really to uh, you know, just give you a little bit of context about uh, the OERU and this DS for OER course, why we're running it. Mm -hmm and uh, the opportunity to, to meet colleagues and friends from, from around the world. Yeah. What I might just do is uh, start off um, with a couple of introductions. Uh, myself, I'm Wayne McIntosh. I, I work full-time for the OER Foundation, uh, which is a charitable organization that is helping education institutions and individuals yeah. around the world yeah. achieve their strategic objectives using open education approaches. And we administer a number of flagship projects, uh, the Wiki Educator Initiative, which is a community of some 80,000 educators from around the world, assembling OER. Uh, we also host the OER Universitas, which is a, an international collaboration of some 30 plus institutions from around the world who are assembling OER courses and then uh, aiming to provide assessment services uh, towards formal academic credit. And uh, we also host Creative Commons Aotearoa New Zealand as a self-funded project, which is the national affiliate of uh, Creative Commons. So that's just a little bit about the OER Foundation. And uh, I will hand the mic around the room just in the order of the folks who joined, uh, just to introduce themselves. So, um, Dave, uh, if I can hand the mic over to you. Sure, sure. So I'm Dave Lane. Uh, I actually am employed by the Open Education Resource Foundation, so I work with Wayne uh, from day to day, although mm -hmm. I'm based in a different city. And, uh, I'm based in Christchurch, New Zealand, and my accent is American, just in case anybody, uh, yeah, in, in case anybody mistakes me for a fellow Canadian. <laughs> um, sadly, uh, sadly, I cannot claim, <laughs> claim to be a Canadian. Okay. These days it would be quite helpful. Helpful all the time. But yes, I'm based, I'm based in Christchurch, New Zealand. Uh, and so I work with um, OER uh, from day to day. Hello, Pick. And uh, uh, I'm taking part in this course just um, <laughs> despite having a lot of experience with technical things. I'm actually more interested in learning about the educational aspects of this because I'm a technologist um, rather than an educator by background. Hi, for, uh, for folks that have just joined us, Pete and, 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 and others, uh, we're just going through a round of introductions. And I'd appreciate it uh, while you're not speaking, uh, if you could just mute your microphones because that just helps a bit with the uh, echo loop. You'll see at, at, at the bottom of the window, you can, uh, the display window, there's a a toggle switch for a microphone so you can mute it um, while you're not speaking. So, so Emma, let, let me uh, hand the, the mic over to you. Uh, and uh, well, you should be unmuted now, I hope. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am unmuted. Um, my name's Emma Allen and I work for OP Online at Targa Polytechnic down in Dunedin, New Zealand. And I'm very new to this whole scenario. I was a photojournalist uh, up until about a year ago. So I'm moving into a different area. So it's all new and interesting. Oh, welcome. Welcome, Emma. Oh, we could really use the skills of photojournalism in open education. So you're very welcome here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so uh, Randy, let me hand over to you. Uh, just remember to unmute yourself. Okay, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Randy uh, Fisher. Um, what can I say? Um, uh, many years ago, uh, in a time, a place somewhat far away from me um, right now, uh, my office was adjoining Wayne's, and he was working on a little project. And we had a little conversation, and I he said that I could help him, and and we ended up working together in my, my role to help to build the, build the community. First 18,000 people. And um, um, it uh, sort of ushered in a new era of awareness and understanding and appreciation for me about, about the value and importance of, of open education resources. 
And um, at the time, I uh, did my master's degree in organization development, and I decided to focus it on, um, I guess, activity, if you will, in the online environment, in the behavior of educators, and actually using a wiki to, to um, develop, uh, you know, create, develop, uh, share, mix, remix resources. So uh, it, it was one thing to talk about this uh, great revolution that was happening, but also to look at the behavior of people who were instrumental in, you know, facilitating um, um, the use, use and re resources. Uh, over the years, I've been uh, still connected, connected to the OEM. Um, I work for a member of OER organizations, but now I'm an independent consultant based in Ottawa, and uh, I'm looking for looking for reconnecting uh, and uh, um, working on this uh, resource. So um, it's great to see all these great face faces, and um, I'm looking forward to uh, working and share, sharing with you all if that's in the cards and. Uh, and I just want to say, just looking around the table, for uh, seven years, years, I guess, eight years since I know Wayne, Wayne I've got his hair, and he's got more. <laughs> Here we go. Thanks, thanks, Randy. Yeah, uh, we've had an interesting journey around openness uh, together. And just, uh, just for the benefit of, uh, of other colleagues, the, the OER, you has contracted a, a number of consultants to assist us with the assembly of courses for OERU. And uh, Randy is one of the consultants who's helping us out uh, with this task. So uh, let me hand over to Lenora. Well, hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here. I'm a latecomer, but um, trying to catch up to everyone and so excited to have this opportunity to be able to work with all of you. I was a part of the OERU over the last, I guess, two years. Um, I'm now on my own and I'm thinking about um, the opportunity right now. I live in, I guess I should just tell you where I live. I live in uh, northern Alberta beautiful little community called La Clavish. Um, and so now I'm looking at doing the things that I like to do and pursuing the interests that I have. So OER is an interest of mine. I, I didn't know a lot about it up until I started working with the OERU. I didn't have a chance to do some of the, of the work that kind of interested me when I was, I was, I was um, kind of bringing the people together to see if we could create some courses over the last two years. And so I've been thinking, well, now's the time maybe for me to have a chance to do some of the other work that I enjoy as well. So I'm looking forward to dabbling and talking and thinking about all of this with you. That's yes, thanks, Lenora. You're most welcome. And I'm glad you could join us. Um, that's the power of open. You, you can get to dabble in the things that interest you. So, mm -hmm. uh, Christine? You didn't see me scrambling because there's no camera to turn off the mute. Um, so um, I'm from Montreal as well. And um, what could I say? Um, I've done a lot of things around education. I have a very sort of varied background in graphic design and uh, writing uh, for all kinds of different um, um, target audiences um, and but I've always done a lot of different a lot of different things around education and e-learning and um, I've always been very interested in open education and uh, when Wayne asked um, me to participate in uh, developing those resources so I was very excited about it and um, that's why I'm, I'm here so to learn more about how to do that so um, yeah nice to meet you all Fantastic, Christine, and we really chuffed that you, you're part of our team uh, helping to build MVP uh, for, for the OERU. Um, and, and next in line, Cameron. Uh, kia ora, hello. Uh, How was everybody? Um, so what Christine didn't tell you, can you guys hear me? Yes? Yeah. Okay, cool. This is a new headset, and so it's all very exciting. So uh, I'm across the room from Christine, so that's one thing that we didn't mention. Um, and uh, she also didn't mention was that we, um, we lived in uh, Dunedin, Christchurch, and me, Wellington, um, for a little while. I probably worked downstairs from you, Emma, for a little bit. Um, I worked for OP Online for about 18 months. And then before that, I was up um, near Dave. Um, I worked at Lincoln. 
um, I was there during the excitement. Uh, we'll refer to it as that, shall we? Um, and uh, I was there for the quakes and everything, so that was good times. Um, and I've been doing um, education, education de development one way or the other for about 10 or so years, or a little bit more. Um, um, so at Lincoln, at Christ, at um, uh, OP online, now I'm at a corporate learning and development place here in Montreal. So um, yeah, and then I did some stuff um, at Concordia University here in Montreal before I before we um, before we moved. So yeah, that's sort of me, and I'm helping out as well with some development stuff. Hey, thanks, thanks, Cameron. You you're really helping us uh, amass together a, an interesting team with diverse international experience. So it's all great. And uh, uh, Pete, uh, if I could hand over to you. Uh, hi, my name's uh, Pete Ely. Uh, I work down at uh, Targa Polytechnic down here in Dunedin, the, in New Zealand. I actually work with Emma for the OP Online, so it seems we've got quite a few people who've either working here or worked for here. Um, I'm the same, I'm fairly new for, in the, the whole open education area, so uh, my main skills are really outdoor education and I've kind of fallen into this as a secondment oh, a for really, the next three really years, really helping out with science. development of online courses for for a, a target polytechnic. So it's a wee bit of a career change in education weird, for me. It's a weird dimension, isn't it? Oh. oh, there we go. So it went to moving the screens around. I just... <laughs> Um, yeah, are you in the original? That's me, file. really. Uh, thank, thanks, Pete. Uh, good to meet you. Um, so, so I've attempted a screen share. Uh, I just want to confirm if that's uh, coming through for you. Can, can you see it? Yes. Uh, you, sh you should see a screen, uh, DS, where we are. Yep. Okay, so that's, yes. that's all Lovely. Right. So, I love the open source desktop. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, uh, that's actually quite important and serendipitous that uh, the screen that you see in front of you is the OERU distinctively open. Um, this wasn't planned this way. It just happened that, you know, the uh, rotation happened to land on distinctively open. Uh, but that is, a, you know, a key facet of what we do here at the OER Foundation. Uh, everything we do is, is managed openly. Uh, we are building courses based entirely on open education resources. They all carry open licenses. Our entire uh, enterprise technology stack is based on open source, free and open source software. Uh, in fact, the planning of the OERU is conducted openly and transparently for everyone to see in the wiki. So, I mean, I, I guess one way of describing us at the OER Foundation is that um, we, we are open sourcing education. And um, the core mission of the OERU is to, to you know, to widen access uh, to tertiary education study, especially for those learners who will be excluded from the privilege of a tertiary education, because by offering, uh, you know, online courses that are based entirely on OER, we can do this at no cost uh, for the learner. And our partner institutions uh, around the world will be offering assessment services uh, leading to credible credentials. And um, this is where uh, this co course on uh, digital skills for o uh, collaborative OER development fits in. Because at the recent partners meeting held in South Africa uh, in October at Northwest uh, University, the partner network agreed to assemble uh, what we are calling minimum viable product, which will be a full first year of study leading to an exit credential. And uh, we, we, we decided that th these courses will be assembled on a common platform. There are two exit credentials that are on the table. One is a certificate in higher education, which will be offered through the University of Highlands and Islands. And the, the second exit credential we have on the table is from Thompson Rivers University, a certificate in general studies. So we are working on you know assembling this critical mass of courses so that's more or less the context 
and um, you, you will be familiar with the the course website we are using for uh, DS for OER. Uh, just a little bit of a background. The purpose of this course is to help you uh, figure out and acquire the skills to actually publish your own uh, website using the technologies we use. Uh, that happens to be a, a, a WordPress uh, website uh, that is uh, assembled from a collection of Wik uh, you know, wiki pages. Let me just uh, show you the example of those pages that we used to build that course. So let me just log in here. And you'll notice the snappy internet we have here in the deep south of New Zealand. <laughs> So what, what you'll see on screen here is uh, an outline, which is essentially a bullet list of individual wiki pages. So this is a structured bullet list. You'll see here startup, course guide, interactions, learning pathways, uh, which actually mirrors the, the course site uh, you are looking at here. So this whole course is about how we use the wiki as a collaborative authoring environment to publish um, these uh, website snapshots uh, and that's what this course is all about so at this point are, are, are there any questions uh, from the floor uh, before I move uh, move forward and what I'll do is I'll take silence to mean assent <laughs> as we do in our open meetings okay uh, Randy I think you're muted if you can just uh, unmute your mic Um, I was just say, given that our mics are muted, how can we raise our hands if we have, we have a question? <laughs> but, uh, now I know the answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Randy, not a problem. It's it's a uh, good question. We could either maybe uh, signal by using the the chat window, but uh, just unmute unmute yourself, and um, yeah, butt in. That's fine. Randy, I think you muted yourself again. Right, not to worry, Randy. I just I just put out a no chat, so I'm 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 gonna mute now. Okay, Randy, thanks. Uh, right. So, uh, a couple of things I want to just uh, point out with uh, the technology that we're using. One of the um, key features of any open course is the ability to access course materials without the need to have password access. Um, and this is a, an important uh, policy and, and, and principle of our open courses. And, 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 and so we don't restrict access to any of the course content in any way. Um, you know, by requiring users to log in and have a password in order to access the materials. So anybody you know, on the planet who wants to have a look at what we're doing is, is able to do so uh, without having to register. However, we do provide the option to register uh, you know, for a course. And that the, prime, the reason for, the two prime reasons for that, that is one, if a, a, a participant wants to receive email instructions uh, for the course, or secondly, if a participant wants to contribute to our own technologies that we uh, provide for uh, you know, in, in interacting through microblog posts. Um, and if, if you want to do that, uh, what, what you'll need to do is perhaps what I let me launch this in an incognito window because I am actually logged in at the moment. But if someone comes to the site, um, you'll see there's a little uh, graphic on the right-hand side of the screen um, uh, to register. If you haven't done this yet, you'll just uh, click on the register tab. You fill out the form, select your passwords, and uh, if you are planning to maintain a blog, which we encourage in this course, uh, we 
request that you enter your blog URL of the published version of your blog. You'll, you'll, you'll know if, if you're a regular blogger that you have a version, a URL that you use for editing blogs. Um, the URL that we need is the URL for the published versions of, of, uh, of the blogs. And I'll explain now how that works. Um, so let me just close this down. One of the key features of uh, OERU courses is um, this course feed, uh, which is a technology we use to aggregate interactions and contributions from learners participating in the course from, you know, from different sources. And uh, so, for example, you'll see Christine has just tweeted here, you know, from Twitter, uh, using the, in, by including the hashtag, we are able to harvest those contributions from uh, different uh, sites and different technologies. So for example, here you'll see a course which refers to a post I have made in the uh, native environment we've got here for posting a WeNote. Uh, the Wiki Educator Note is a, a technology developed by the OER Foundation uh, that enables us you know, to, to, you know, to post. And, and Randy, yes, it is, it is working. Uh, you, you were logged into Wiki Educator and um, have posted. So you'll see we are aggregating these interactions from from different uh, sources. Here, for example, is a, a post which Brian Mulligan, uh, he's based in Ireland, uh, posted earlier or overnight. Um, and by adding the tag uh, DS for OER to his blog site that was registered with us, we are able to harvest those blog posts and insert them into this interactive time, uh, timeline. So it's actually an, an, an interesting way in which we are able to um, aggregate communications uh, that are you know, posted on the web in different places that, that we are harvesting. And why this is important uh, is that the OER Foundation and the OERU is actually extremely well positioned to become a world leader in what we call open boundary courses. And what that is, is an open boundary course is where you take an OERU course, import it into the local learning management system and teach it to full-time, full-fee, full-registered students uh, studying through your local learning management system, learning in parallel with free OERU learners. And the technologies that we use through this aggregation process will enable us to have these two groups interact with each other. Um, and, and so this is one of the key reasons why we use these aggregation technologies, because you'll appreciate that an OERU learner who's studying one of our free courses will not have password access to the institutional learning management system. And, uh, and, and so how do we get these two groups to interact with each other? And the way we've done it in the past, and we've run prototypes doing this, is within the local learning management system, uh, we uh, set up a designated open forum, which uh, you know, tells the full fee registered students that if you post in this open forum, uh, it will be published on the World Wide Web and shared with uh, other learners around the world. And the OER Foundation, as a trusted partner, will have a robot um, sitting in, you know, in the learning management system to go and harvest any open posts and integrate them within this feed. So I'm, I'm just mentioning this as part of the context because it is, it, it's an important facet when we are designing courses to think about, well, how do we assemble the learning sequences and the learning pathways in ways that can be reused in multiple contexts? So not only reused uh, on different web pub, uh, or different published websites, but also delivered using a variety of technologies. So that's just a little bit about the uh, the course feed feature, which is pulling uh, interactions uh, from various sources. And we are actually piloting uh, for the first time this uh, in, in 2016, uh, integrating the ability to post to we notes from within individual course pages, uh, which we didn't have previously. Um, so, for example, if you are logged in uh, and you come to an activity where, you know, you're invited to uh, share a thought uh, via a micro blog, uh, there will be an area where you can actually post, um, you know, 
from within the page, right? Um, you know, hello, hello. So if, you know, if I post now, you'll see that when we go back to the course feed, that that should be there. So you get the idea. So folk can uh, post these short uh, microblog posts, you know, a stream of digital consciousness. It's kind of a, a live chat, uh, either via the poster we note on our site, or they can post via Twitter. We also run a, a support forum um, called groups.overu, uh, uh, correction, called forums.overu.org. So for more substantive uh, uh, discussion forum posts, we are also able to harvest that. And then we are also able to harvest individual blog posts. Um, most of our activities uh, in this course encourage learners to uh, demonstrate their learning uh, by you know, posting something on their personal blog. And that is also harvested into the feed. And uh, the big advantage of having learners, um, you know, post on their own blog sites is that our learners retain control of the content they are creating. So once the course is finished, they're not going to lose all their contributions because it's their own personal blog. They will retain control and ownership of everything they've created in any of our OERU courses. So it's, again, a, a key philosophy of openness with, with, within the OER Foundation that we respect and provide the freedoms for individual learners uh, to own um, their content. Wayne, just, just a question, because I'm just just wrapping my head around this. The blog, is it hosted on Wiki, on Wiki Educate or it's on WordPress? So, so, so all right, so the, a blog that a learner is using to share their learning activities is a blog that they either host, for example, on blogger.com or wordpress.com. So you, you, you're able to set up your own uh, no-cost blog through Blogger or WordPress. And those are the blogs that the learners are using to share um, their learning and their experiences through their activities. What we do is when a learner registers, they, if they want to, they can share the URL of their blog site with us. And by sharing that URL of the published view of their own personal blogs that they are hosting, right, we are able to aggregate those contributions into the timeline. So the short answer to your question, those blogs are blogs out there on the internet that are managed by our individual learners. Okay, now the second part of this question is the published version of an OERU course site, right, actually happens to be a blog as well. So this course that you're looking at, DS for OER, is actually published on a blog site that we at the OER Foundation are hosting. So instead of uh, uh, publishing courses in a learning management system, one of the public, uh, publication avenues we offer is to, you know, uh, to host on a personal blog or, or to host on a blog site. For our OERU partners and people that are developing, the OER Foundation will host those blog sites on our technology. So in other words, you don't have you know, people that are on this course or uh, you know, OERU partners or consultants that are assembling courses for the OERU, you don't have to worry about hosting your own blog site. Um, we will host that for you. But the interesting thing with this course is we actually teach people how to set up and maintain their own blog site on one of the uh, free services, free cloud services that are provided. So, for example, in this course, if you wanted to, we will take you through the, the process of registering and administering your own blog site on uh, OpenShift, which is managed by Red Hat Cloud. And the reason we do this, you'll appreciate in the Wiki Educator context, there are 80,000 educators. As a small foundation, we do not have the resources to manage 80,000 or host 80,000 websites you know, for anybody in the world. Um, but what we do do is we uh, teach the skills for people to host their own domains 
using free technology, if that makes sense. However, for our OERU partners and our consultants and folk on this course, we will host a, a, a blog site for you to publish your OERU courses and the skills you acquired during this course. So Randy, I'm not sure, does that answer your question? Remember to unmute. You know, it, it's kind of confusing, I have to say. But you know what, I don't want to get in, in the way of move, moving it along. Uh, so just, just it, it's a bit conf confusing, but I don't want like I say, get, get bogged down by this. I, it'll, 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 it'll evolve and emerge as we go along, I think. I think. Yeah. You're absolutely right. It will evolve as, as we move on, and that's actually the purpose of this course, is to remove that confusion. And so, so the short answer is how, how we go about developing a, and publishing a course is we put together a collection of individual wiki pages in the wiki as a bullet list. There's a technology, a script that we run, and we'll set this up for you that you click a button after you've entered your user, you know, your username and password, push a snapshot to WordPress. And then this collection of wiki pages will be published on a blog site. It will automatically insert the navigation in for you. It will automatically apply the style sheets, the look and feel, and it will automatically do the next and previous. So there'll be a lot of magic um, that will happen to publish a, a site, you know, a responsive design site like this, you know, that is designed for mobile devices. And that's what we're going to cover in this course, the process of actually how to do that. And those are the different sequences we, we teach in the course. It's... Randy, you're laughing. <laughs> I'll read the chat. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Yeah, it, uh, we've come a long way uh, in terms of you know a bunch of interesting technologies. Uh, any any other questions from the floor? Criticisms, thoughts. I just <laughs> Damn you, Wayne. <laughs> I don't know. I've just kind of come up with a criticism. No, I, I was just making sure that I understood. Basically, the the wiki educator stuff gets scraped through your technology and displayed in this format by the WordPress site and some kind of code magic black hat stuff going on, right? You're absolutely right. The uh, amazing hackers at the OER Foundation have developed a bunch of magic code that will take a bullet list of wiki pages and publish an impressive looking uh, WordPress site for you. That's how it works. Um, that, does the, and I haven't poked under the hood at all yet, does the, does the WordPress site offer um, any tracking or marking things that we'd see in a traditional LMS or is it just mostly a, a one-way thing with forum linkages? So um, we do provide uh, statistic services. We run an open source technology, uh, which you know does uh, tracking of website visits, but it's not tracking learners. If if that's your question, and and the reason being is a, a key philosophy of the OER Foundation is the ability to be able to learn without having to register a password, and so there's you know there's this difficult challenge, right? Um, you can't track something you don't know about, right? Sorry, I keep forgetting to unmute. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Thanks, Wayne. The, the, the other reason around the approach that we are taking is the ability for us to take any learning you know, pathway or any content we have and generate a custom export uh, for Moodle, for example. So the thinking here is that we've got a single source of information right, uh, that we can publish to a variety of different delivery platforms. And so for those of you that come from a learning design background, the challenge is, well, you've actually got to design for reuse. You've got to think about, well, okay, and my content is going to be sitting in different delivery platforms. You know, it might be a, Word, a WordPress site, it might be a learning management system, it might be a static website. 
And so we've got to think about those things when we are assembling the, the course materials. And, and, and that is really what the open design challenge is about, is you know, designing for reuse. And we, we cover some of that in the course materials. Um, perhaps, perhaps now would be a, a good point just to uh, sort of highlight the generic structure of uh, you know, an OERU course. Um, you know, we have the startup information, it's quite, we have a course guide. Uh, which you know covers the course aims, you know, the syllabus, the usual stuff you would have, uh, you know, in a course guide type of thing. You know, the course assignment, if there is one, uh, you know, recommended resources, which is the high level guide to help learners, uh, you know, sort of na navigate the course. We have our interactions, uh, which are really just two things: the course announcements, which are one way uh, announcements that a facilitator sends out to the learners. Because remember, most OERU courses. On, do not provide full tutorial support, right? Because uh, we can't afford to do that. Um, however, uh, the, we design pedagogies that encourage peer learning support where learners help each other. And that's why it's important to build in these interactions, but, you know, microblogs and blog posts so that learners can interact and help each other. And the, uh, we've already had a look at the course feed, which um, is you know, brings all these interactions together that are distributed across the web. The actual uh, learning materials are, and uh, in the, the case of the OERU, we call them learning pathways. And we, this is a, a it was a consultative decision that uh, we've had discussions, debates about, you know, what do we call the subunits of learning? And the challenge we've got is every institution typically uses a different nomenclature for calling their you know, units of learning, you know, whether they're sections or topics or units or modules or spaceships. They, they, you know, different institutions in the network use different labels. So what we've done is we've decided to use a label that is, uh, won't be used by anybody else, which facilitates reuse in different environments. Uh, so you can call them whatever you want in your own environment. And so an individual sequence, and you would have seen this on the site, um, uh, learning pathway uh, you know on how to you know develop wiki skills it consists of a number of sub pages you know the overview of and objectives perhaps a video signpost the content that you work through and uh, in this particular course the uh, model we're using is to build skills using a number of learning challenges the thinking is that uh, in this course it's a skills course the best way to learn is by actually doing things and so we built a number of learning challenges for each of the sections. And typically, a learning challenge would involve, in this case, to you know, basic wiki skills is to develop your user page in the wiki. And so you actually learn by doing, and then you share your experience um, from doing that. And so you'll see each learning pathway will have its own learning challenge. And so later on in the course, we will also cover specific digital skills uh, which are important for authoring and developing in this environment. Um, so, for example, you know, how to source and find images that are using the appropriate licenses for open licensing. How do we go about remixing a diagram that I source uh, you know, on, on, on the open web? You know, how do I go about integrating video in courses? How do I remix those videos? Um, how do we implement pedagogical templates uh, in OERU courses, we make use of a certain markup for uh, you know, activity templates. So we will actually cover the skills needed to actually set up you know, an activity template like this web resources uh, look and feel. Um, so everything that you need to know in order to assemble a course for the OERU technology um, you know, is covered. Uh, Pete, I see you raised a question and I would Given that we are new to using Zoom technology, I would love to know how you raised your hand. <laughs> so I was just playing around in the background. If you click on the participants panel down at the bottom. Yeah. And then it shows you a, a wee little pop-up box and it, you can raise your hand. Oh, well, interestingly on oh, mine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I see that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Hey, thanks. Thanks for sharing, Pete. No worries. So, so Randy, we've answered your question. That's how you raise your hand. 
Now, see, a lot of participants have raised their hands. I have to. I have, I have to confess that really listening, I was just writing a note in the chat window. So how do you raise your hand? Sorry, I uh, got Pete. <laughs> there's, there's no worries, Randy. You, if you click on the participants on the bottom of the, of the screen, you should bring up a window like Wayne's got in front of him on the screen now, and then there's a wee little raise hand. There you go. And obviously, I can't raise somebody else's hand, so that's why it's not showing for me. There we go. So, and why would I raise my own hand? <laughs> thanks, thanks for sharing, Pete. So I noticed a couple of other hands were raised. I'm not sure if those were just practicing raising hands or they were, you know, authentic hand raisings. <laughs> Any questions from the floor? Okay, so we, ha we have a question from Randy, uh, which is if you know changes are made to the content in the wiki, are those changes immediately reflected in the WordPress instance? Uh, so the answer to that question is no, they're not immediately uh, reflected. So you know the changes that are made in the wiki. The approach that we're using is a snapshot model, right? So, you know, you can go go ahead, edit in the wiki, make changes in the wiki. It's only when you request a new snapshot to be made. It will make a snapshot of that instance at that time. Uh, so that's basically how the, uh, the technology works. Uh, any other questions? Either in the chat win, uh, either in the chat box, or uh, via microphone, via audio. Uh, the, uh, the only the the only the only point that I uh, uh, I did in the chat message is this: the version control will be in the wiki where the content is. It, it, exactly, Randy, um, and and that is. Uh, you you will know from your own experience in uh, in the wiki. Uh, you know we have a detailed uh, history uh, of any wiki page and any edits that are made. And this is the reason we are actually using the wiki as the primary authoring engine, is so that we have detailed version control of the content. So if you think about it, uh, and if we were, for example, to use a learning management system for the authoring of the content, let's say Moodle, or any one of the learning management systems. And I give you, Randy, access to edit in my Moodle and make changes to the course material. I'm not necessarily going to know what changes you have made. So it, it, it makes it harder to work collaboratively across international boundaries. And so in the OERU context, um, you know, we're working you know, in different countries and you're going to be assembling a course uh, in, you know, in, in Canada and I'm going to be coming in and helping out doing a little bit of you know, this and that. And there might be a, a subject matter expert who you know, will come along and you know, have a look. And so we, we use the wiki pages as our, our, vision, our vision control system. It's, the interesting thing is, is um, towards the end of last year, we ran a survey, uh, an input evaluation survey with all our OERU partners and actually asked them uh, about, you know, a couple of questions around, you know, technologies and features, technology features they deem important. And the top three reasons and feedback we got from the OERU partners in terms of the features that the OERU, uh, you know, authoring and de development environment should have were as follows. Top ranked item, the ability to reuse and integrate OERU online course resources for reuse in the local institutional learning management system. So they, not, not only do we want to be able to have uh, you know, this open website for free learners, they also want to reuse courses in their own learning management systems. So we, you know, version control is important. And that's why the second reason they highlighted here is they want a collaborative authoring environment with version control. The third, uh, the third item was interesting. They, they want to build knowledge and skills in the use of open source development approaches. 
And those are the top three ranking items uh, in terms of you know the technology solutions recommended for the OERU, and and, and which is why we've you know developed the technologies and technologies in the way we've uh, developed them. Right. Any other questions, comments from the floor? Oh, I see. Oh, I just want to say uh, w say hello to Gail. I'd, I, 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 I didn't uh, let the rest of the group know that um, Gail would be popping in. Uh, another Canadian. I think we outnumbered by Canadians today. Uh, so uh, I'd like to, uh, Gail, if, you, if you've got a mic there, it'll be good just to say hi and uh, introduce yourself to the team. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, Gail. Okay. Yeah, I just came in from a meeting, so I joined in and I'm listening <laughs> from afar. So I'm, I'm Canadian slash from Trinidad and Tobago. So I'm representing two countries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, we were chatting yesterday about um, uh, the bacon, bacon shark. <laughs> and uh, you, you know I have a passion for jerk chicken, so. <laughs> yeah. So welcome, Gail. It's great to have you on board. Okay. So that, that's basically what I wanted to, uh, to cover today. You know, just a bit of an orientation of the, you know, the website, what it looks like. Please remember that if you uh, haven't done so yet, um, do register on the site because then that will give you the ability to actually participate uh, and, and, you know, well, not participate, but be able to post uh, directly uh, via the on-site uh, We Notes feature if you prefer not to use uh, Twitter. Uh, it's a place also you can register your blog URL. Uh, for folk that are actually assembling OERU courses, I encourage you to actually set up a blog and not that you expect to do every single activity, right? You, you can sip and dip and do what interests you. But at least just to go through the experience of doing one blog post and getting it registered so you can actually see how this looks from a learner's perspective uh, because that will help tremendously when you're assembling uh, um, you know OERU courses uh, and I think that's basically all I wanted uh, to cover today um, the last question really before signing off is is this a time that works well for most of you uh, because we, we're keen to run sort of uh, office hour sessions every week so that as you start uh, uh, diving into some of these uh, technologies and some of the skills we're going to be covering that we will every week provide, you know, synchronous uh, support. So I just want to get a sense, is this a good time for everybody or should I uh, post another poll uh, to find a, a better time next time around? If it doesn't work for you, uh, just let me know in the chat. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Any questions? We're just having a, a logistics conversation here. Um, it's possible that one of us will be able to make it at this time um, for these uh, Picking up child logistics gets funky on Wednesdays very often. Right now he's on spring break, so. Um, okay. But we'll work that out with you. Okay, thanks, thanks, Cameron. Appreciate that. Great. Gail was asking a question in chat that I'd be curious about. Are you going to record all of all of the sessions that we have? Um, uh, there's no reason why why we can't. Uh, I, I, I'll just need to confirm that with every you know session we start. Yeah, no, that's. Uh, and I, I, just I do think it's valuable for folk who, who can't make it um, that we have a recording available. But that, of course, is dependent on you know permissions from folk to you know say hey, that's fine. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, makes sense. Right. Let me stop the screen sharing there. And in theory, my video should come back.
Right, colleagues. Yeah, uh, you're if, there large as life. <laughs> colleagues, if, if there are no uh, additional questions, I'm happy for us to sign off and, and move on. But uh, please don't hesitate to contact us at any time. Uh, there's another rather cool feature which you may or may not be aware of. Uh, and that is if you go to chat.oeru.org, uh, chat.oeru.org, maybe I can quickly, I'll start the screen share again and I'll you know, illustrate this for you. Uh, we have a, a support website, chat.oeru.org. And, 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 and this is essentially the, the, the chat engine that we use, uh, the OER Foundation staff use uh, for, uh, for communicating uh, in real time. And so if at any time, assuming it's uh, within kind of New Zealand daylight hours, uh, and we keep weird hours here at the OER Foundation, uh, if, if you are available, um, you can just pop into chat.oeru.org and um, we'll be able to help you in real time. So it's good to know, you, you know, you might be struggling with a bit of wiki syntax or you're not sure how to do something, you know, just pop in here. And I'm sure, you know, one of us is more than likely will be around to, to be able to help you out there. So just a little bit more. It might, might be worth Wayne showing the wiki, the wiki educator, the wiki educator room, just so people can see what it looks like. Or, or uh, the, the wiki educator room is using a bot. Uh, so it's, it's so this is a typical conversation yeah, about the OERU, and uh, you, you'll need to you'll need to create an account, of course, um, on the technology, and you can just pop in and say, you know, you know how how do I find out about the wiki? And uh, somebody should be around to be able to answer that question. So those are the, the, the support technologies we have in place to um, help uh, progress this forward. So from my side, that's all I wanted to cover. And unless there are any additional questions, I will uh, post a copy of this video recording, assuming everything has, has worked. This is the first time we're actually using this technology. Uh, and um, it'll be good to see if the video is recorded properly. Cool. Thank you. Goodbye, all. Appreciate your time. Okay. Thank you very much, Wayne. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Cheers. See you later. Bye.